Okay, two, one, welcome back. So volume of cylinder and cone. So let's just jot these down. I'll show you hopefully where these come from and what you can do, especially in the younger grades. So this is assuming that you're kind of in grade eight or nine and you're trying to learn about this volume. If you were in the later years, I would have shown a little bit different uh, approach to showing you the formulas, all right? But I will maybe put in the show notes one of my favorite ones, which it does use a little bit of calculus. So obviously if you're in grade nine, you still might not be there, but you can certainly take a look and see how much of it you would understand and where you would get stuck. Okay, but I'll try to keep it as simple as possible, which is probably best. So volume of a cylinder and a cone. So if you're talking about the volume, now I just wanna remind you, okay, so for prisms, which I discussed, I'll put a link up above there. You can take a look if you haven't seen that one. So for prisms, we know that the volume is equal to the base multiplied by the height. Now, because we have a cylinder here, which we know the base of, and we kind of know the height of, we can measure those things. Um, so we can figure out exactly what the volume of this cylinder is. So our base, which is this nice region, you know, right here. So that's our base. Well, we know that the base is pi r squared. So that is the area. So that is the base of the, okay, so let's say if it was some kind of a prism. So in this case, it's a cylinder. So we know our base, so that's right here. Now we know our height, so we know that the volume of a cylinder is pi r squared times h. That shouldn't surprise you, right? Because you have the base and then all you're doing is you're going all the way up. So if we would fill this up with water or some liquid, that would be the volume that we would generate, okay? And then depending on what the units of R and H are. Now, please make sure that those units are um, aligned, right? So they're um, consistent. So if it's in centimeters, then the H is in centimeters. If it's all in inches, it's all in inches. It's not that you have one in meters, one in feet or something like that. So always make sure that you are having the same unit. So cylinder is not bad. Now, what about if you had to figure out a cone? So I'm not gonna go and try to use calculus here. I'll try to use a little bit of intuition and what you could do to practice this out. All right, to find the volume of a cone. So our goal is to find the volume of a cone, what it is. Now, from above, we know that the volume of the cylinder was equal to pi r squared h. Now, a cone is clearly not a cylinder. However, what if our cone, so our cone right here, had the same base? So if our base what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take this base, all right, and let's say that's the base of our cone, which is the same as the cylinder. Now, if you filled this cylinder up, let's say that you could fill it up with water, then we would know what the volume is. The volume would have been this right here. That would have been our volume of that entire cylinder. Now, if you had a cone, that you could put inside of this cylinder with the exact same base, you know, and you would be basically placing it all the way inside. Then what you would run into is, you know, so I'm gonna draw this cone right here. You placed it all the way inside. The volume of that cylinder is basically the same as whatever water, okay, if you filled this up with Okay, so if you fill this up with some liquid. So whatever liquid spills out would be the actual volume of your cone. Because whatever has spilled out, okay, is whatever has been displaced by you putting in the cone inside of that cylinder. And now when you do that exercise, it actually turns out that what spills out 
is going to be a proportion okay, of the entire cylinder. And it turns out that a third of the volume will spill out and that third is the volume of your cone. So this isn't some kind of a, a proof by some mathematical means or some others. It is basically just using your intuition and thinking about, okay, what are these volumes all about? And in reality, that's kind of how it all started, right? So if you are experimenting, you know, you're going to start making some hypothesis of like, hmm, what is the volume of a cone? Okay, and I think the volume of a cone is, let's say, a quarter of the cylinder. And then you would test out your hypothesis and you would turn out and you would see if you kept doing these experiments that you basically would realize that no, it's not a quarter, it's not a half, it's not anything else. It is actually a third. All right. So that's what I wanted to show you. So these are the two equations. So this one is for the cone and this one is for the cylinder itself. And now you can start applying this to many uh, other problems, which I will do because I'm gonna do a summary test, okay, towards the end of this little unit that I'm working on. All right, okay, so thanks for watching and see you in a future video. Bye everybody.